Hi, this is T. Roy, and you are watching Restaurant Rewind, Episode 3. What happened to Henry's Hamburgers? In Episodes 1 and 2, you'll remember we looked at two burger chains that were competing for the top spot in the Burger Wars. In What Happened to Sandy's Drive-In, we turned back the clock to look at the chain that was formed with the sole purpose of taking McDonald's head-on, Sandy's Drive-In. In Episode 2, we revisited a chain that had a recent cameo in the last season of Mad Men, one that met the same fate as Sandy's. Yep, it's none other than Burger Chef. Today, in Episode 3, we're taking a closer look at another fast food burger chain that has largely faded into a distant memory. At one point, Henry's Hamburgers had over 200 locations at its peak in the mid-60s, which was right in line with McDonald's at the time. So what did happen to Henry's, and what kept it from leading the pack? We'll try to answer those questions today as we revisit Henry's beginnings, its rapid expansion, and subsequent decline, leaving only a sole survivor in Benton Harbor, Michigan. In 1954, the Bressler's Ice Cream Company saw what was happening with the growing fast food drive-in industry, the McDonald's brothers had found solid success in San Bernardino, California, which influenced many spinoffs, namely Hamburger Handout. Wrestlers saw the success that Jim Collins had been experiencing, and they decided to see if the company could claim its share by opening its own hamburger chain. This idea made a lot of sense. The company executives needed a new channel to promote sales of their malts and shakes, but they needed one that wouldn't interfere with their existing ice cream shop franchises. Now, if they could start a hamburger chain, they could cash in on this new fast food idea, as well as expand their malts and shakes at the same time. It was brilliant, and Henry's Hamburgers was born, using the name Henry to honor the memory of the late Henry Bressler, one of the brothers who had founded the ice cream company. Henry's was famous for their 10 burgers for a buck special, as well as their classic 1960s walk-up drive-in buildings and their enormous sign out front. Like other chains of the day, buildings were simple yet visually appealing. The huge road signs just screamed, ooh, ooh, pick me, pick me. With the operations headquartered in Chicago, Illinois, Henry's Hamburgers was one of the big five in many Midwest markets, competing directly with Sandy's, McDonald's, Burger Chef, and Burger King. In fact, as it was with many other chains, the buildings of the day looked very similar. Take a look at the original McDonald's building, compared to a Wetson's and then finally a Henry's. With the signage removed, it can be tough to tell the difference with the untrained eye. It's no surprise that Henry's exploded to over 200 locations as there were other chains that I've already mentioned doing the same thing at that time. Burger Chef, Sandy's, Hardee's, Mr. Quick, Burger King, and of course McDonald's, and others. The fast food industry was just ripe for chains like Henry's in the 1960s. But going back to our original question, what happened? Why does Henry's now exist as a single store in Benton Harbor, Michigan? Well, remember when I said that the industry was ripe for all of these new chains to explode across the country? Well, simply put, what goes up must come down. In the mid-1970s, chains all over the fast food landscape felt the heat, and unfortunately, Henry's was, Henry's was no exception. Mergers and ownership changes within the Bressler Company no doubt played a large role. It became apparent that Henry's just didn't have the proper ammunition to be able to compete with the big guns long term. McDonald's and Burger King were able to convince their parent companies to shell out big bucks for huge expensive advertising. While Henry's had certainly done some advertising, it wasn't in a position to elevate its marketing to that of McDonald's, Burger King, or even Burger Chef, and the chain struggled to stay relevant. Failure to add popular features like a drive through pickup window, and with no diversifying of menu items like the competition, Henry's was in trouble. Underperforming stores were closing at a rapid rate, and a rumor didn't help that process at all. 
Some Chicago locations were accused of cutting costs by mixing cheaper horse meat in with a hamburger as a filler. While horse meat was approved by the FDA, if you do a Google search, you'll discover that horse meat has been used in many ways at different times in our culture. However, the 1970s wasn't one of those times. I've attempted to find documentation of this, but I haven't found any credible resources so far. Nevertheless, true or not, something like this does not help an already struggling hamburger chain. So amid the rumors, Henry's Hamburgers franchise units in Chicago were accused of not informing the public about this use of horse meat, and the outcry in the months following caused the failure of all the franchise units in the Chicago area, and the rest of the already struggling chain followed suit. The sole surviving location is in Benton Harbor, Michigan. Don Bishop and Harold Shook opened the Benton Harbor Henry's in April of 1959 and the new Fair Plain Plaza Shopping Center. They established a reputation for quality, service, and value, listening to their customers instead of the franchisor, which enabled them to remain in business long after the Henry's chain ceased to be a major player in the 1970s. This was strictly a carryout business until the addition of drive through service in 1988, and now drive through accounts for over 70% of their sales. Wayne Sinekel and Dave Slavicek bought out the Bishop Shook family in 1983, embarking on a major updating of this facility. The drive through service system was updated in 1999, with a change of ownership in the Fair Plain Plaza and, a, and an obsolete building to contend with, Henry's decided to build a new state-of-the-art hamburger factory, almost directly across the street from the original store. Dave Slavicek bought out Wayne Sinekel in 2006. In addition to its staple hamburgers and cheeseburgers, chili dogs, hot dogs, fish sandwiches, deep Fried butterfly shrimp and crispy catfish are also available, as well as onion rings, mushrooms, and of course, french fries. Shrimp and mushrooms. Hmm. I think I'll stick to the good old standby burgers and fries, but hey, it's nice to see a little different variety. Fried egg sandwiches with bacon or sausage are available in the morning, as well as all other menu items. So, if you're hungry for a Henry's hamburger at 8 a.m. in the morning, not a problem. The real key to success is Henry's commitment to its roots even when things got tough. When the brand and the Chicago locations were scrambling to find ways to cut costs and taking shortcuts in the process, Henry's in Benton Harbor refused to compromise the quality and tradition that their customers expect. Henry's claims that it's been able to compete against other national hamburger chains by retaining that hometown hangout feel and by being a little quicker and more innovative in new product offerings than the big boys. Henry still features the brown bag special, which is a double cheeseburger, order fries, and a drink, and the monster meal, which is two double cheeseburgers, half a pound of fries, and a large drink. The brown bag accounts for over 50% of Henry's daily sales. And the chain still uses the slogan, Aren't you hungry for a Henry's? You can still see many of the other Henry's Hamburgers buildings in use today as car lots, title loan companies, and often they carry on what they were built for, restaurants. So if you're a fan of Henry's Hamburgers and you find yourself close to Benton Harbor, Michigan, stop in and give them a try. I think it's great that they've tried to remain true to their roots. There's also a memories section on the Henry's website that allows for people to leave some comments about memories with Henry's. Be sure to check that out as well and share your favorite Henry's memory. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to Restaurant Rewind now using the link to the right. Then, check out the links on the left for similar videos. Leave me a comment below on what you'd like to see next. I'm T. Roy. God bless and thanks for watching Restaurant Rewind.